Hello and welcome to the lesson video notes for chapter 8, lesson 2, trigonometric ratios. This is not a mistake. We are starting chapter 8 with lesson 2. We skipped right over lesson 1. Uh, we will be starting with lesson 8 too. Today our objectives include finding the sine, cosine, and tangent of an acute angle. We're going to explain what all those words are. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Then we're going to use these three trigonometric ratios to find side lengths in right triangles and to solve real world problems. Let's start by doing this warm up. I will give you time. If you need more time than what I give, go ahead and pause the video. Most of you will probably need to do that. Uh, you need to, on one and two, write each fraction as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. That's two decimal places. And on three and four, you're going to solve each of these equations if you would need to round, round to the nearest hundredth as well. Alright, if you need any more time, pause the video, otherwise we will continue with the answers that we should get. Two-thirds is 0.6 repeating, which becomes 0.67. 7 over 24 becomes 0.29. When we solve for x here, we need to multiply both sides by x in order to do this. This is a problem we're going to come up on several times in this lesson. To find out what x is, we have to remove it from the bottom of the fraction. We have to multiply both sides by x and then divide by 0.8. And then you get x is 7.25. But on this problem, all we have to do is multiply both sides by 0.8 or 8.5. That's 7.99. The vocabulary terms we will cover in this lesson include trigonometric ratio, sine, cosine, and tangent. By the angle-angle similarity postulate from chapter 7, a right triangle with a given acute angle is going to be similar to every other right triangle with that same acute angle measure. So we have these three different triangles that are all similar because they're right triangles with an acute angle of 32 degrees. That means we could have the proportionality of BC over AC would be the same as EF over DF which would be the same as yz over xz. These are called trigonometric ratios. A trigonometric ratio is a ratio of two sides of a right triangle. And we have three specific trigonometric ratios that we can talk about because each right triangle has three sides. The sine of an angle, not S-I-G-N, but S-I-N-E, sine, of an angle, is the ratio of the length of the leg opposite the angle to the length of the hypotenuse. So if we're, say, we're talking about angle A, the opposite leg would be lowercase a here, the length of B-C. The hypotenuse would be C, the length of A-B. So the sine of A would be the ratio A over C, opposite leg over hypotenuse. The sine of B would be its opposite leg, B over hypotenuse C. So again, sine is the ratio comparing the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the ratio of the length of the leg adjacent to the angle to the length of the hypotenuse. If we're talking about angle A, cosine of angle A is the adjacent leg B over hypotenuse C. Cosine of angle B is the adjacent leg A over hypotenuse C. The tangent of an angle is the ratio of the length of the leg opposite the angle to the length of the leg adjacent to the angle. So if we're talking about angle A, the opposite leg is lowercase a, the adjacent leg is lowercase b. Notice I do not use hypotenuse when working with tangent. If I'm talking about the tangent of angle B, the opposite and adjacent are switched. Opposite becomes B, adjacent becomes A. Adjacent means part of that angle or next to that angle that we're talking about. So to review, sine is the ratio of opposite leg over hypotenuse, cosine is the ratio of adjacent leg over hypotenuse, and tangent is the ratio of opposite leg over adjacent leg. And there's a little acronym we use to remember this. When we talk about opposite over hypotenuse for sine, we remember it by writing this. S for sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
So is how we would read that abbreviation. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Whenever I compare the cosine ratio, I'm comparing the adjacent leg to the hypotenuse. So we read that abbreviation as cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We read that ka. And then for tangent, we say that the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. And so we abbreviate that as tangent equals opposite over adjacent. And so altogether, we remember these three trig ratios by the acronym so ka toa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we will apply this in these next few examples and it will start to make a lot more sense. Okay, here's a helpful hint in writing math. In trigonometry, trigonometry refers to using these trig ratios. Instead of saying the word trigonometric all the time, I'll just shorten it to trig. In trigonometry, the letter of the vertex of the angle is often used to represent the measure of that angle. For example, the sine of angle A is just written as sine A. The capital letters, remember, represent either a vertex or the angle measure of that vertex. So let's take a look at example 1a. We are going to write the trigonometric ratio. Remember, we're writing a ratio, so we'll be having fractional answers. We're writing it as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to write our fractional answer first and round to the nearest hundredth. We are given all three sides, so we just need to remember our trig ratios from our acronym. Let's see if we can remember that. Remember that in our trig ratios, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So in each of these next examples, we'll need to remember so ka toa. Since we are asked to find the sine of angle j, I'm going to start at angle j and figure out what is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So from angle J, the leg that is opposite angle J across the triangle would be KL. The hypotenuse is KJ. So whenever I fill this in, KL is 60, KJ is 61, so as a fraction, 60 over 61 is the sine of angle J. We can divide that out with our calculator, just enter 60 divided by 61, and we get approximately 0.98. Let's take a look at example 1b. We are asked to find the cosine of angle j now. We just found sine, we just need to find cosine now. Remember, the cosine of an angle is the adjacent leg over hypotenuse. Ka, C-A-H, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We're still talking about angle j. We should recognize 60 was opposite angle j, so the leg that is adjacent to angle j is 11 the hypotenuse is still 61. So the cosine of j is 11 over 61, which is about 0 0.18. And then they ask for the tangent of k. Now we're switching to a different angle here, angle k, and remember that tangent is opposite over adjacent. The opposite leg of angle k is 11, the adjacent leg for angle k is 60. So the tangent of angle K is 11 over 60, and when we divide that out with our calculator, it's about 0 0.18. Let's take a look at example 2. In example 2a, we're going to recall what we've learned about special right triangles to write the cosine of a 30 degree angle measure. Instead of giving the vertex, we're going to plug in our angle measure in for that vertex. Okay. So in special right triangles, remember this is what we consider a 30, 60, 90. We can remember that the short leg is half the hypotenuse. So if I call this 1, the hypotenuse is 2. And then the short leg times square root of 3 is the longer leg. So this would be 1 root 3. So these three things we might remember from our lesson from chapter 5 over special right triangles. So we're going to write the cosine of 30 degrees as a fraction 
using these three values. We're going to draw and label our 30-60-90 triangle that's already given to you in your notes. And now, we're going to remember this. Cosine of an angle is the adjacent leg over hypotenuse. So if I'm talking about the cosine of the 30 degree angle, the adjacent leg is the root 3 measurement, the hypotenuse is 2. So the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. The adjacent leg is root 3, 2 is the hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. That is how we would leave that written as a fraction. If you're not sure if this works, we will take a look in class at how to verify this using your calculator. Let's take a look at example 1b. We're going to draw and label our 45-45-90 triangle. Remember in a 45-45-90 the legs are, are congruent, so if I called both these 1, the hypotenuse is that leg times root 2, so 1 root 2 is just considered root 2. The tangent of an angle, if you'll remember, is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So the tangent of this 45 degree angle, it doesn't really matter which 45 degree angle we use or which one we consider opposite or adjacent because they're both 1. So the tangent of 45 is 1 over 1, which is just 1. Alright, we're going to get going on a couple more examples and then most of our examples we will actually finish in class together. This video is just going to get you started and give you a little bit of an introduction and we'll do a lot of our work in class on Friday. But let's take a few more moments to get familiar with our calculators. We're going to use our calculator to find the trigonometric ratio. Okay, so all we're going to be doing is plugging values into the calculator, but you must be sure the calculator is in degree mode, not radian mode. So if you do these calculations and you're not getting the same thing I get, we need to change the mode on your calculator. I can help you set that up in class. Um, you could even Google how to do that with your calculator model, and it will tell you, and uh, you can be one step ahead. So to do sine of 52, all you have to do is do sine of 52 like this. Now, depending on the calculator model, you might have to hit the number first, then the sign button. Once again, I'll kind of help you adjust through this in class. But either way, we should get about 0.79 if we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. So the sign of a 52 degree angle is about 0 0.79. So why don't you take a moment to complete the other calculations for parts B, C, D, E, and F of example 3, and then we will check our results. Okay, if you need more time, please pause the video and don't continue until you are ready to check the answers, but here's what we should get. For part B, the cosine of 19 is about 0 0.95. The tangent of 65 in part C is about 2.14. The tangent of 11 degrees is about 0 0.19. The sine of 62 degrees is about 0 0.88 and the cosine of 30 degrees is about 0 0.87. Now cosine of 30 degrees you might remember back to example 2a we said root 3 over 2. Well if you did the square root of 3 and divided it by 2 with your calculator you would get this exact same number 0 0.866025403 as your calculator shows it. Alright, here's some little reminders. These are printed in your notes, but make sure you read this. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle. So the denominator of a sine or cosine ratio is always greater than the numerator. That means that sine and cosine of an acute angle are always positive numbers less than 1. Since the tangent of an acute angle is the ratio of the length of the legs, it can have any value greater than 0. Alright, before we begin example 4, we're actually going to cover examples uh, example 4 and 5 in class together. Um, we're running out of time with the video here, but if you want to go ahead and try and take a start at using your book to figure out how to do these, you could be one step ahead. Otherwise, we will take a look at them in class.